As an instructor, as we teach how to diagnose battery parasitic drain, there's a tool I developed that can help make that teaching a lot easier. Now this little box, we can connect that to any power source and it will add a constant parasitic drain, but it will also add some intermittent parasitic drains. And not only that, it will allow us to change the amount of amperage. There are two settings of parasitic drain and we can set that with this switch right over here. And then this is the time delay in between. So let's take a look and see how this works. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna connect this up to the alternator because that's a straight up parasitic drain. So let me show you one of the things that can be done on your cars that you use at your school. So this is a little pigtail and there's a little rubber cap right here. So that's going to keep the water and moisture out of it when you're not using it. Then you can come into one of your fuse box areas Pull a fuse box up, splice this in up underneath the fuse box in any fuse that you want, or you can take it over to a component and splice it into a component and then ground one of them. Then when you want to hook this up so that there's a parasitic drain on your particular vehicle, then we can come over and connect it directly to the box and turn the box on. So you can put multiples of these on one car, then you can put them on multiple cars. And if you have two or three of the parasitic drain boxes, then when you're ready to teach this module, you just go and you plug them in and you plug them into this pigtail and then you turn the box on and you set your settings. And then the students will have to figure out what fuse or what circuit has that parasitic drain. Now let's just go ahead and hook this up over here on the alternator. So right there's my alternator positive and I've taken the box right here and it's in the off position. I've just plugged this into the end and we're just gonna go ahead and let's connect my positive up and then connect my ground up. Now currently there's no drain to this. I have a small light that comes on right here because I don't want it really obvious for the students. We turn that on, there's a little tiny light that you can see if you look just right at it. Otherwise, it, I don't want it to be noticeable. This first switch in the zero position is always on drain. This is a high amperage draw, this is a low amperage draw. This is a time delay and this is not effective on the always on. When we put it on low right here, that's going to pulse every 90 seconds. That's going to create a parasitic drain. It'll be determined off of your amperage that you chose. And then we're going to determine whether or not how long we want that. So this one here is going to be um, 500 milliseconds. And this one here is 1500 milliseconds. So we can choose how long we want that intermittent pulse to be on. So let's first go ahead and put this on a constant draw. We've got it on the low amps. And let's come over and take a look at it on our battery. So let's go ahead and connect our amp meter up. Now we don't know if it's high or low, so always start with the high amp so you don't blow your fuse. And put your common in. And we're gonna come over here and choose our amperage scale. Then we're gonna come over and we're gonna use a clamp. I might get the polarity reversed here, but let me see, I believe I'm gonna put the negative here. And then I'm going to loosen this up and lift that up to get my parasitic drain. And I'm working on the negative cable, which is the safe place to be working. Okay, I've got it on my negative cable. This is my negative lead, which might be reversed. I'm going to hold my positive lead on the battery post and let's see what we get on the meter. So I'm getting 185 milliamps and that's pretty close. Now let's go ahead, I'm going to put this back down. Let's come over to my box. Let's see if I got enough leads on the box to get it in frame here. And so that's on the low setting right here. Let's put it on the high setting. So we've got it on the high setting right here. We do have it on constant. So let's come on over here and let's check this one more time.
Now we've got 279, 269 milliamps. So we've changed the amount of amperage. However, that's constant. What happens if I put it on the first setting, which is low right there? So that low is going to be every 90 seconds. So let's come on over and let's put this back on my low amperage setting. And now let's see what kind of amperage we have drawing on this. So we only have 55 milliamps drawing and we're going to need to wait 90 seconds. Now in order to capture that, what I'm going to show you what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put this on min max and I'll put it on maximum so we can capture that when that happens. And let's switch these terminals around. So one of the first things I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to take it off my minimum maximum. Re-enable minimum maximum. Okay, we are on min max right now. It's showing us doing uh, 66 milliamps. Let's actually take it off min max for a second. Let's put it back on min max. Let's go to our maximum and let's wait for our 90 seconds to, to purge by. There it goes. Okay, we just jumped up to 180 milliamps. Now, if we come back down and take a look at what we're actually pulling, let's take min max off. We went back down to 58 milliamps. So how do we know how long it stayed at 186 milliamps or whatever that value is? We don't know how long it stayed there. That's where we're gonna have to use a picoscope in order to do that. So when you have that intermittent pulse like that, you just can't come over to this fuse box and start checking your fuses, pulling fuses to see if the draw goes away. You can't use an infrared to see which one gets hot. You can't use a voltmeter and do your voltage drop because it happens so quick and you won't be able to spot that. So you're going to need a picoscope to do that kind of diagnosis. And this can teach the students a quick way to figure that out. So I'm gonna show you how I use this with a picoscope to find that intermittent pulse. And you can set different intermittent pulses on this so your students can have fun finding it. And you can have fun watching them figure it out. So we're gonna close this up for now. And then I'm gonna bring the picoscope out and I'll show you how we can use that picoscope to figure out how long this pulse is. And then later I'm going to show you how we can use that picoscope to figure out which fuse might be pulling too much amperage at that intermittent interval. So in order to determine how long that pulse is, we're going to need something like an oscilloscope. So I'm going to use my picoscope. I'm going to take my amp clamp here and we're going to just go around this negative cable. I've got my pico here and I've got it on my laptop over here. So we'll switch over and take a look at this laptop here. So here's my picoscope and I've got the capture, but let's go ahead and show you what I've done here. So we're running it. I've got a trigger right here. That trigger happens to be set at, let's see what the trigger is set at. So the trigger set at 150 milliamps and I've got a single trigger and I'm running at 200 milliseconds per division. And there's the actual draw. I noticed the single trigger captured just that one waveform. So let's come on over and measure exactly. And you can see these other little spikes. So there's something spiking on a regular basis on this car, but my simulator is doing this part right here. So that's what the simulator is doing, is that part right there. And if we look up here, we'll see that that's 500 milliseconds, and that's the time I set on my tool. So my tool has a 500 millisecond setting and a 1500 millisecond setting. Now let's come over and see if we can get two readings on this. So if I come over and turn this on and let's play this, but let's increase this time considerably. And I'm looking at 90 seconds, so I'm going to need uh, at least a 10 seconds worth of time. So that's one second per division. And let's come over and change my 
pre-trigger a little bit so we get a little sooner pre-trigger. So we're gonna have to wait up to 90 seconds for this to trigger and then we're gonna have to wait for it to trigger again. Okay, so there's the first pulse. We should get another one on the screen within a minute and a half or 90 seconds. And it looks like I have way too much time on the screen. We could have put less time on this screen and still captured this. There's my second pulse. So let's go ahead and stop it. And let's zoom in and take a closer look at this. So here we can see our pulses. Let's move the zoom window out of the way and let's draw some time cursors in there. And let's place that when the first one pulses, somewhere in that area. And another one over here where the second one hit a pulse. And it should be about 90 seconds is what the programming is on the tool. And there you go, one minute 30 seconds is how my rulers show that out. So I'm gonna show how we can use this with the other channels in the Pico, as well as using voltage drop across three other fuses at a time to see if we can narrow it down. So we can check three fuses at a time at a voltage drop to catch that intermittent spike or that intermittent current draw. And then if it doesn't pan out for those three fuses, we'll move to three other fuses. So we can test at least three fuses at a time while monitoring this intermittent amperage spike. I'm going to demonstrate how to use all four channels of my PicoScope to isolate the problematic fuse and circuit that is causing excessive intermittent battery drain on my BMW. This first capture is directly from an inductive amp lamp that is around the negative battery cable. While monitoring battery amperage drain, these small pulses come from the alarm LED. These pulses from 50 milliamps to 130 milliamps is abnormal and repeats every 10 minutes. I have set the software to auto save when the buffer is full. Speeding up the timeline 10 minutes later, there is another abnormal 130 milliamp pulse which could slowly drain the battery over an extended period of not driving the vehicle. I isolated which fuse box feed wire was the culprit by using two inductive amp clamps, one at the fuse box and the other at the battery. With this information, I was able to determine that six fuses take power from this wire. These are ATO style fuses and because of this design, I can remove the plastic cap and back probe each fuse to perform a voltage drop test. I'm using one amp channel and three voltage channels where I can quickly isolate the problematic circuit by the voltage drop across its fuse. Once the amp clamp detects an intermittent battery drain, I can stop the scope and capture the voltage drop across each fuse. Zooming in on each voltage drop channel, I can identify which channel has an increase in voltage drop at the same time as the amperage also increased. This will indicate the problematic circuit. This information will be used to isolate the cause of the abnormal amperage increase that is causing the battery to go dead if the vehicle sits for two weeks. A lot of cars use these ATC fuses, and contrary to the ATO, they don't have a top that comes off, and you can't just stick a pin in there or a back probe and expect it to stay. It just won't stay in there. So I'm currently working on some prototype items, and these are little caps. There's holes in the end, and in the end of these holes, these back probe pins will fit in here, but they fit in relatively snug. As you can see, I'm using some effort to get that to stay in there. Now, once those are in there, we can take these caps and they will fit right on the end of that ATC fuse, and then it'll allow us to stick our back probe pin in there. Now, this is one design, and the second design I'm looking at is a little bit different, and these are all in their prototype stage, but they both kind of snap on the end of that fuse and then provide a hole to put that back probe pin in. If we have a fuse box, it's going to look something like this. So this can snap right onto this fuse right here. And then if we need to do multiples, this one will fit right next to it. And then we can stick our back probe pins in these holes and connect it up to our scope. 
or the other design has a couple of ears on it, so it snaps in place like this, and then a second one can go in place right here next to it. And again, we have the holes in the back, which gives us access to use this back probe pin to stick it in there and be able to touch these fuses and make that voltage drop test on our picoscope. I'm also working on a design that will work with our mini ATC fuses, as well as this design of mini ATC fuse, so that we can also do something very similar. And we'll have these caps that go on the end of the fuse, so we can use the back probe to back probe these devices as well. And these will also go on and fit right on top of that mini fuse. It'll snap into place, and then if necessary, we can go ahead and put two or three of these on there, and then we can stick our back probes in there and make our electrical voltage drop test.